John Anderson, former Deputy Prime Minister, are we sufficiently prepared to meet this challenge? Do we even understand it? Emphatically not. I love history. We were ready for the First World War. Little country, four and a half million, geared up, got a first class navy, it secured the homeland. We were not ready for the Second World War. My father was in the 9th Division in the Middle East. He nearly lost his life. Australia was woefully unprepared. We didn't even have submarines to tackle the submarines that the Japanese were using, and the Germans, on our coastline. We were ready in the Cold War. It didn't turn into a hot war because the West believed in itself and we had strong leadership and military capability. This time around, you know, we've not so much been asleep at the wheel as comatose. Your outstanding podcast, Conversations with John Anderson, You've spoken to three of the world's experts on warfare and its economic repercussions. You argue they mount a powerful case for effective economic and military intervention in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. What form, John, should that intervention take? Do you know, I, I almost have to take that on notice because I'm not quite sure what you can do now. The sanctions don't appear to be working. No. We, we've got a situation here, frankly, where the Germans are pumping a lot more money into Mr Putin's coffers, yep. a fortune, because gas and oil prices have gone through the roof, yes. uh, and uh, than they actually contributing to the Ukrainians' defence of their homeland. Quite. I, I'm going to have to pass and say I well, wish I Well, Professor, I in that podcast, which I heard Professor Victor Davis Hanson said we should be sending as many anti-tank weapons and javelin missiles to Ukraine as quickly as possible, and Hansen was optimistic that Putin's forces could be repelled. What I prospect? I agree with that. I agree with that. But when I say I don't know, I just wonder whether the willpower's there. Yes. Because another one of my guests, Neil Ferguson, said the greatest danger in this war yes. is that we will stop paying attention and let it drift out of our consciousness. Mm. The Australian people are smarter than the pundits give them credit for. The Lowy Institute research gets that the Australian people recognise that these global military threats are more serious than climate change. What prospect do they offer, these men to whom you speak, the experts of Putin's own people overthrowing him? Uh, not a great deal, would mm. be the answer. Uh, Kissin, uh, Konstantin Kissin, himself a Russian, said we need to... Uh, what, the thing you've got to understand about Russia is that they briefly flirted with democracy. They didn't know how to handle it when Gorbachev uh, you, know, uh, be, you know, tore down the wall, and it was a disaster. They weren't prepared for it. They, it was such a terrible experience. Putin gave them back order. If nothing else, he got order go back into the country. And they may not love him, but they respect him for, you know, giving them a society that's in some way ordered again. So I'd say, generally speaking, not terribly positive. Just finally, before we go, because I, I could talk to you forever, and it's magnificent, and to my viewers, you plug your ears, John Anderson. I know what you're all thinking out there. What on earth are we doing without this man in the parliament? It's just a nonsense, isn't it? But John, just finally, in one of those podcasts, you talked about really the enemy being within. That yep. is our own failure to understand our own ability, to be confident of who yep. we are in our own country. How bad is that disease? I actually am beginning to think it's very serious indeed. And it's funny, you know, it's the old, what is it? The, the, the exception is often what proves the rule. It's the number of young people who come up to me and say, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I tap into what you're saying, what your guests are saying, because I get that I'm being fed a monochrome diet Absolutely. of talking our society, our culture, everything it stands for, down. Absolutely. And the great question, I go back to where we started in terms of the census, the society that we're building with all of the evident problems. They're all there in the research. They're all there in the data. You don't have to look. It is not going well. Do you really think more of the same is the answer? It's time we went back to the crossroads and said, what was it that made our country great? What did our forebears believe in? What did they stand for? Why are we failing to be worthy of what they gave us? Because I think we are failing. Good on you. Wonderful stuff. We must talk again. Great to talk to you, John. There he is, John Anderson, former Deputy Prime Minister, former leader of the National Party, Deputy PM to John Howard and making very significant intellectual contributions to Australia. We can't hear enough of him, and I hope we'll listen to him again. John Anderson.